Hi, this is Ryan Lawler. I'm here at TechCrunch Disrupt San Francisco. I'm here with Leah Buskey and John Zimmer. Uh, Leah, you're the brains behind TaskRabbit, and John, uh, you started Zimride and recently launched Lyft, uh, a ride-sharing service. So I guess uh, what you both have in common is, you know, these are marketplace ideas, and it seems like there's all sorts of them popping up uh, recently. So. You know, what is it that's changed over the last few years that's really sort of enabled these marketplaces to emerge and to flourish? Yeah. There's been some, some huge structural changes to, uh, I guess, information infrastructure mm -hmm. that have allowed us to cut down a lot of the friction that existed before. So Facebook, uh, you know, cutting through kind of social uh, and allowing us to connect people in a trusted environment uh, quickly, you know, using their platform. Uh, and then real time, you know, with phones, um, uh, able to cut down a lot of friction on uh, knowing where people are and getting services to them quickly. Okay. Yeah, I mean, five years ago, the technology didn't even exist to do what we're doing today. And actually, John and I met back at Facebook Fund in 2009, okay. um, where we were all starting to build on the Facebook Connect platform. Okay. And so, you know, I think that uh, we've seen the industry and technology change so quickly, even from three years ago, um, that, you know, what's ahead is just going to be a, a lot more innovation in that area. Okay, so Facebook's a big part of it. Identity is a big part of it. Um, when you think about ensuring that you get the, the best possible people, um, in your case, you know, doing tasks and uh, driving around uh, people for Lyft or Zimride, um, wh what sort of things do you have built in place to, you know, do background checks or sort of have that extra layer of protection? Yeah, so when I started TaskRabbit back in 2008, one of the very early learnings was that um, people were concerned about trust and safety. So even back then, we talk a lot about it now, but this was an issue you know, from the very beginning with peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces. And so at TaskRabbit, we have a four-step vetting process that includes an online application, video interview, background checks, and then a training program, even before you're activated on the site. And then from there, there's a pretty robust reputation engine, ratings, reviews, badges, points, so that you can really understand who you're working with, what type of quality and skill sets they have. And I know with you guys at Lyft, you're doing a lot of the same sort of things. Yeah, and we actually came to Leah when we, when we designed our system mm -hmm. uh, and, and heard from her learnings. And uh, on top of that, we, we just launched a, a, the first of its kind million dollar excess liability insurance policy. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is when you're a new player in these spaces, you have to, uh, and we were talking about it on stage, you have to go above and beyond the current players. Mm -hmm. So because you're, are, you are going to be under the microscope. Mm -hmm. So when we designed our you know, criminal background check, our DMV record check, our uh, insurance policy, we wanted everything uh, to go above and beyond. In addition to that, we do in-person interviews uh, and in-person training, not okay. just to get the, the safety and trust piece, but with safety and trust, you can also, the next step of that is community. Right. Um, and so uh, by spending time with these people um, and by telling them what's important to the culture of Lyft uh, and the culture of Zimride, uh, we're able not only to get safety and trust, but also build a sense of community. Okay, so how do you get people you know, just used to this idea, yeah. you know, regular consumers. You see the idea of, you know, for instance, riding in a regular person's car, yeah. you know, and, and sharing a ride in that way, um, or, you know, having someone pick up dog food for you, yeah. or do your laundry, or clean your closet. I, th okay. I, I, <laughs> I think, you know, we're finding that these are age old problems. I mean, these are things that people have experienced outsourcing and doing for decades and decades. It's only new that you would go to your neighbors or go to another peer network to actually fulfill these requests. So I think people are getting more comfortable with this concept of sharing resources, living more efficiently together in community. Yeah, I mean, it's also going, like the way you're talking about it, it's going back to our roots. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to talk to our neighbors. We used to give people rides. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to stay at each other's homes. Um, and it's just extending that sense of community, um, you know, you know, farther. We've also done things with uh, you know, I think that whole vetting process again gets back to making this okay and, and make it getting over that like doing this for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, when I have had experiences with TaskRabbit, the person is always pleasant and, uh, and that makes me want to do it again. When you get a lift, um, we've designed it in a way to, to break the ice because it may be the first time you're getting in someone else's car. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a pink mustache on the car, you smile, mm -hmm. the driver smiles and it starts off on a really positive note. I, there's also a lot of social stigma with like 
you know, when you get into another alternative transportation mode, you don't know the driver. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you've just accepted that because it's something you've done for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that's also important to note. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess uh, the, the other question sort of on top of that is, you know, we're reaching a point where this is becoming an issue. Like, you've gotten so much interest that, and I think Alexia mentioned this on stage earlier, you know, you open up the Lyft app and sometimes there's, there are no yeah. cars available. So how do you scale to actually like meet that demand yeah. um, as people become comfortable? Now it's almost like it's a good problem to have, yeah. but it's sort of like... Yeah, it's a great, it's a great problem to have. Uh, that said, we want to capitalize on all this demand. And so we have to build an excellent operations team that uh, can scale and maintain quality uh, very quickly. I think you'll see in the next couple of weeks that we will uh, catch up to, to that demand. Okay. Yeah, and I think to that point, quality is so important. It's not just about finding scale and flooding a, a network with all kinds of supply. Mm -hmm. It's about ensuring that that supply is of the highest quality, that they're representing your brand and your culture and your community the way mm -hmm. that you want them to and the way that you've built it out. Um, so that takes some care. And I think, uh, you know, it's tempting to sacrifice quality sometimes for mm -hmm. scale. But I think uh, really, you know, focusing on the quality portion is the important thing. Okay, well, excellent. Well, good luck to both of you. Thanks a lot for joining us on stage and backstage at TechCrunch Disrupt. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us, us Ryan. Thanks.